David Barnson is with us this morning. I tried to get into the show a little earlier on. I stopped him, but here he is. <laughs> You're a political guy. So are the Democrats, as the journal says, in panic mode? A lot of them are. And then there are some that seem to be uh, in delusion mode. Uh, Jim Messina, Obama's old campaign manager, came out this week saying something similar. Um, I do think that those uh, special elections are encouraging for Democrats. But President Biden's in a lot of trouble. And it's all about the age. It's it all is. about the age. And that isn't going to get better. Uh, Kamala Harris's speech about Gaza offended me. First of all, her fake dramatic pauses drive me crazy. And apparently 64 percent of the country crazy with her 36 percent approval. Uh, President Biden uh, can't approve the part that he's most vulnerable with, which is the age and the the mental acuity. Um, If President Trump could behave for the rest of the campaign, he would win going away. I agree with him. Can he behave? (laughs) No comment. (laughs) Let's get to the markets. You're the money guy here. We're coming off a record high for the Nasdaq last week, but you're bearish on the magnificent seven. Why? Well, when we say bearish, it's not a prediction it's about to immediately go down. Some of them are already going down. It's bearish that I can't buy things that are that expensive and expect to have a good return in the future. And you look at NVIDIA as just torrent pace, another 60% up this year, now trading at 66 times earnings. I just think people are playing with fire. That's a bit much. Yeah. All right, David, stay there. You're with me for the hour. David Barnes. Thanks, Stuart. You're no fan of NVIDIA, are you? I think it's an incredible company. I'm a big fan of the business, just not a fan of the stock. Uh, if they were to split, it doesn't raise any money for the company. None whatsoever. It doesn't add anything to the balance sheet. No, it but just it moves makes, the stock up. It, it, no, it moves the stock go down with more, the same amount of shares with a lower price. It double shares, lower price. It but makes no difference. buy that, to, that stock. The, the history has price. never proven that with stock splits. It's done nothing post-split, maybe for a day or two. And if I was more intellig- intelligent and intellectual, I'd take you on about I've that. I've studied one. it thoroughly. <laughs> okay, Ma. Well, what's your last name again? <laughs> Boston. Get out of here. I believe it just hit an all time high. Yes, it wow. did at 8.43. Now, the CEO is trying to figure out how long it will take for computers to think like humans. How long? Five years. That's when artificial general intelligence, AGI, can pass almost every exam. Okay, Barnson is gnashing his teeth. You've got five seconds to tell me why. Uh, There will never be a time in history that AI can replicate a human being. (laughs) The mind is uh, cognitive. It's programmed by humans. Uh, The soul and the heart were made by God, and a computer cannot replace a human being. But it will try. It will will try as they want. They'll never do it. Excellent input. Excellent. I, I take it all back. The lawyers who got a court to reject Elon Musk's $56 billion pay Mm -hmm. package, they want their money. How many billions are they demanding? This, uh, six billion in stock. Uh, Elon Musk was to get 10% of the value he added. Tesla went up $620 billion, which is why he was to get $60 billion. Right. They work off of an hourly wage. What I would do is take away their bar license for the disgusting <laughs> legal argument they made. But be that as it may, there's one way to set wages in this country. An employer and employee negotiate. If the shareholders don't like what Elon Musk has paid, then they can sell their stock. It's very simple. Good stuff, Dave. Again, good input. And by the way, Tesla is down 50% from its high two and a half years ago. They're selling more cars now than they were then. Why are they down 50% NVIDIA fans? Because it was so expensive two years ago. <laughs> Ooh, you're sharp edge this morning. You like Mondays, don't you? Uh, Bitcoin, 66,000 bucks. Yeah, uh, 65,500. And that's got the, surely the crypto stock. W- are they going to take out the $69,000 high this week? I mean, it don't feels like the momentum. <laughs> is is working in that favor don't say anything david <laughs> but I'm, we, you've got your stock picks your dividend stock don't picks. Rain on our oh. so forget bitcoin who and wants the to talk about my companies these are just real companies making real products with real profits gilead sciences what does it pay all they are is a healthcare company that's got one of the most <laughs> successful hiv treatments in history and a growing oncology department for those who care about things like curing cancer, which may be less profitable than speculating on a digicoin. Um, What's the dividend payment? It's 4.3 percent. And all we care about, of course, is the growth of the dividend, Stuart. I do remember those days. (laughs) Okay, I got it. Next, uh, Verizon. You've always brought that to us. We've had one for a while now, and it's a 6.6 percent dividend, which I don't say because of the high dividend. If a stock drops a lot, you get a higher yield. Verizon is up. It was 28. It's now 40. And it's because they really got past the expensive CapEx they had to put into 5G. They've really improved efficiencies, cut costs. Uh, Verizon's a great buy here. 6% if I buy it at 39 bucks a share. 6.6%. 6.6%.
six oh, let's not forget that okay yeah. maybe a capital gain coming i believe that the stock will continue to grow as the dividend grows all right david good stuff thanks very much stay there please with for the hour david we have to point out that the economy in some respects is in good shape we've got growth better than most other industrial countries we've got a very low unemployment rate and the inflation rate is coming down yeah that's right so they caught a misery index from the jimmy carter years when you had high inflation and high unemployment and the misery index is quite favorable the issue is that it's stuck with the fact his perception of being an anti-growth president he was anti-energy gas prices never needed to go up as much as they did he's missed a lot of opportunities here largely because of the far left got it thank you david guaranteed income programs you know this steve they're, they're absolutely exploding yeah. This is cash to voters, largely without strings attached. The progressive just love this. Uh, you know, this is basically called a guaranteed national income, where you basically are going to raise people's incomes by just giving them cash. By the way, my friend David Bonson has a great book out now on this very subject, that we don't have enough Americans in the workforce, uh, and there's so much virtue in work. And what you do when you pay people not to work, guess what happens? Stuart, people pay, uh, people are, tend to work less. We have a, a, a labor force participation rate that is one of its lowest that it's been in American history. And it's not just bad for the economy. Read David Bonson's book, Stuart. He tells us it's bad for the mental health and the, the, you know, the feeling of confidence that Americans have in their own lives. You know, some of these folks could get up to $36,000 a year. You know that? That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, hold on a second. I mean, David Barnes is sitting right next to me. You've seen this. 36000 bucks a year? I sure have, but I really appreciate what Steve is saying about the book because I think the worst part is not the cost. Mm -hmm. It's what it does to the spirit, the soul of yes, the country. Exactly. You cannot take away the dignity of work and expect a yes. happy, flourishing nation. Germany, Canada, the UK, Australia, what these countries are doing because there's a shortage of working age population. Okay. They're bringing in, they're importing labor from other countries. Instead of buying technology, which gives us productivity, yeah. they just hire cheap labor. What do you say to that? I would also like to see um, American workers, prime working age, show up and go to work and pass a drug test and be in a position where they can be able to work. That's one of the big problems. The companies can't get access to American-born labor, particularly a lot of those blue-collar jobs. But in Germany, they don't want to be, those young people don't want to be butchers. But guess what? Folks in India do. That's right. So they brought them in, and it is really helping the industry. Hey, David Barnson, will this, the Gemini AI problem here, any impact on the stock? It, it seems to be kind of priced in a bit. You notice this is trading at a much lower multiple than the other Mag7. Yeah. Now, it's still expensive, but I think Google is a slower growth company. It's really all ad revenue. They haven't innovated much in a long time. They have a dominant search engine, but they do $100 billion a year of earnings from that search engine advertising. And then the first thing they come out with in 15 years is this disaster of an AI platform, Gemini. So Is, is it a disaster? Oh, I think it is. I think um, I've read a lot of nonpartisan, non-ideological tech reviews of it that are really underwhelmed. Because now they've got to get that nonsense out of the system. That's yeah, yeah, they've got a lot of problems. Look, David, thanks very much for being with you us. Today. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.